Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar which is conducted for ICSC class 10 mathematics students. Through this webinar, we'll tell you certain strategies and tricks that can help you during your exam and also we'll discuss about the overall paper pattern. So let's get started with today's session. So we'll firstly talk about the exam paper pattern that is the overall structure of your paper. We'll then move to marking scheme, then we'll talk about the types of questions that are going to be asked in your paper. Then we'll see certain strategies that can help you during your exam or while solving the paper. And at the end, we'll talk about certain tips and tricks that are helpful during exam. So let's quickly go through the exam paper pattern that is the oral structure of the paper. Your paper is going to be of total 80 marks and you will be allotted two and a half hours to solve this paper. Now these 80 marks are further divided into two sections, section A and section B, as you can see here. Section A will be consisting of three questions wherein all are compulsory. So you need to attempt all the questions of section A. Whereas in section B, there are seven questions and you only need to attempt any four. So you can attempt any four questions out of the seven questions in section B. Now let's talk about the marking scheme. So section A will have three questions. So question one will be of 15 marks. Question two will be of 12 marks and question three will be of 13 marks. So total it will be of 40 marks. All right. Now section B will be having seven questions. 10 marks for each question as we need to attend any four so total it will be of 40 marks so section A will be of 40 marks section B will be of 40 marks in total there will be of 80 marks now let's move on and talk about the types of questions that are going to come in your board exam so section A will be having three questions there will be 15 multiple choice questions question 2 will have three short answer type questions. So basically question number two and then you will have one, two, three. So three sub questions of this main question number two. Similarly, question three will also have three sub questions. So question number three, one, two, three, there will be three sub questions. So let's see the marks for these. So 15 MCQs, one mark for each MCQ, that means 15 marks, all right. Now three sub questions for question number two, each sub question will be of four marks. All right. And similarly, question three will have three sub questions here. Two sub questions will be of four marks each and one sub question will be of five marks. All right. So this is how your section A will look like. Now let's talk about section B. So as I said, section B will have seven questions. Now these seven questions are divided into two parts or two groups you can see. First part is question number four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. All right. Here what you will be having, you will be having two sub questions of three marks each and one sub question of four marks. Now for question number nine, you will be having one sub question of four marks and other sub question of six marks. So one out of the seven questions will be having two sub questions where one is of four marks and the other is of six marks and six out of the seven questions will be having three sub questions where two are of three marks each and one will be of four marks. So this is about overall paper pattern of your mathematics paper. Now let's talk about the strategies that can you use while solving your paper. So as we know that there will be two types of questions that are going to come in your exam. They are MCQs and the subjective questions. All right. So we'll discuss about each of them one by one. So let's see a few strategies, a few points that we should keep in mind while solving the paper. So first is tick the correct one. You just need to write the correct option in your answer sheet. All right. Next is hit in trial and third is rule out incorrect options. So we'll discuss all of these points one by one. So if I'll give you an example of the MCQ, you need to choose the correct option and then you need to write it in the answer sheet. For example here, which is the correct one? Now these triangles are right angles, right? 
So which properties can be used for similarity? Either RHS we can use, but for RHS, what do we need? We need hypotenuse, right? But hypotenuse for these two triangles are not given. So what is left? Now you cannot apply SSS because we need third side. We cannot apply AAA because we have only one angle known, right? So what is left? SAS. So here we have given two sides and the included angle so we can use SAS. So what you need to do is you need to write the correct option. All right. Next is hit and trial. So this is the method applicable for few MCQs or few multiple choice questions. So how you will bifurcate it? Like when to use hit and trial method? So whenever you feel that putting certain values will give us the correct option or will give us the correct answer, in that case you can apply hit and trial method. All right. So for example here, you can either solve this question and then directly get the value of x or what you can do is you just plug in the values that are given in option a, b, c and d. We can plug in 2 instead of x. Now 2 plus this 3 will be multiplied here, right? So this is 2 plus 3 is not going to be 8. So this is, this can't be the case. Now 3 plus 3 again, this can't be 8. Similarly, 4, if you will write 4, 4 plus 3 is not going to be 8, right? So this also cannot be the case. Now 5 plus 3, 5 plus 3 is 8. Or instead of plugging all these values, you could have directly written that 5 plus 3 is 8, right? So 5 is your answer. So hit and trial, that means you just need to plug in the values. For example, if, if there are two linear equations and you have asked to find the solution of those two linear equations. So what you can do, let's say there are two linear equations, ax plus by is equal to c and dx plus e y is equal to f. There are two linear equations and you need to find the solution of these two linear equations. And let's say you have given certain values of x and y. In There are four options and certain values of x and y. So what you can do here is instead of solving these two equations, you can just substitute the values of x and y and see whether they satisfy these two equations or not. If this ordered pair satisfies the two equations, then that becomes the solution of these two linear equations. Otherwise, it is not a solution. All right. Similarly, you can do for other options. So hit and trial is applicable for few MCQs. All right. Wherein you can plug in the values. So that is the shortcut or way of solving the MCQs. Now, next, let's talk about the rule out incorrect options method. Now, rule out incorrect options means you need to omit the options that are incorrect. All right. So for example, here, if you will see, it is given that X belongs to the set of whole numbers. W means set of whole numbers, right? Now, what is W? W is going to be 0, 1, 2, and so on. So we know that whole numbers cannot be negative, right? So if you will notice in options A, B, and D, we have given negative numbers. So whatever values we'll get here for X cannot be a negative number so these options will be omitted right because x cannot be negative so we cannot have op either option a or b or d correct what is left then c is left so c becomes the correct option so this is about rule out incorrect options all right so these are the methods that you can use while solving mcqs all right now let's talk about the subjective question. So there are few points that you need to keep in mind while solving papers and uh, here are those. So you need to be very specific about what is given and what is required in the question. Write what is required. So you need to write what is required. That means like there are two linear equations given and you have asked to find the value of one of the variables. All right. So in that case, what you will do, let's say AX plus BY is equal to C. That is one equation. And DX plus C EY is equal to F is another linear equation. So in that case, if you were asked to find the value of X only, you will find the value of X only. Because if you will go through Y, that will become the lengthy solution. And that is not required, right? So you just need to write what is required be careful about the methods so if it is given in the question that use this method only to solve uh, 
any question let's say for example quadratic equation use formula method so you need to be very specific about the method all right then write the formula so you need to write the formula because writing formula will also help you to plug in the values and for writing formula also you will get certain marks all right so you need to write the formula so let's take an example here so if you will see in the first question what is given this data is given right so certain deposit amount is given then there is a uh, period of uh, deposit is given then rate of interest is given right so you need to be careful and specific about the data and also about what do you need to calculate so here maturity amount needs to be calculated all right so you need to use the formula or method in that way only you also need to be very careful about the symbols that you are using for example here p is used for the principal amount or for the deposit amount right so you need to be careful about the symbols now in the second one also you need to be very careful about the data so it is given that these numbers are in continued proportion all right you need to find m and n so you need to use it in such a way that uh, that you will get the values for m and n again you need to write the formula so there is no formula actually there is a method for continued proportion right then here in third question also you need to be careful about the formula so here you will be careful about the identities the trigonometric identities all right so these four points you need to take care of while solving the subjective questions all right now here also so this question is of five marks if you will see here now if uh, you will notice there are four sub parts right four sub parts that means 1 1 1 1 4 marks and this is of one mark right so you, if you will plot triangle oab you will be getting one mark write what is required so if you will see in the first sub part so here you need to reflect this triangle which you have plotted earlier you need to reflect it through origin you need to be very specific about that and you need to name it as o a dash b dash all right so you need to careful about the naming conventions as well then here again you need to reflect this triangle along y axis you cannot reflect it along x axis and then name it as this one you need to reflect it along y axis and name it as o a, da, a double dash b double dash all right similarly here you need to reflect it through x axis and name it as given here and then you need to join all the points and then name the geometrical figure that is formed all right so here you need to be very specific about the naming conventions about the reflection that is going to be made that needs to be according to the information given in the question all right so you need to keep these points in mind next so there are few more points that you need to be careful about so attempt every part in a question so if a question has two sub parts you need to attempt both the sub parts if it has three sub parts you need to attempt all the three sub parts solve question with more known parts so here i'll give an example for example let's say question number 2 it has three sub parts right or three sub questions and question number 3 it also has three sub questions or three parts now let's see you know sub question number 1 and sub question number 3 and for question number 3 you only know sub question number 2 so what you will do you will attempt this one right because this will give you more marks so you need to be very careful about when you are attending a question you need to attempt every sub question all right careful about the symbols and operators that we already discussed right so here we just saw that the symbols we need to be careful of right for example for deposit we use p and for time we use n and here we use r for rate of interest so you need to be very careful about the symbols 
as well as the operators so sometimes it may happens that in a hurry you may forget to write the operators let's say equal to or multiply symbol like that so you need to be very careful about the symbols and operators while solving the questions all right so you need to take care of these points while solving subject to questions especially now we'll discuss certain points or based on certain topics that needs to be kept in mind while solving the paper so if you talk about the gst concept or gst part so you need to be very careful about the cgst and sgst so let me tell you that they are the intra state transactions like the transactions that are occurring within the state that comes under cgst and sgst so you need to be make yourself clear about these two terms igst is for the interstate like from one state to another state or uh, transactions that comes under igst all right cgst and sgst are basically divided like like whatever gst is applicable is divided into two parts all right so for example if it is 18% 9% will be cgst and the rest 9% will be of sgst all right so you need to be careful about these terms for example if you will look here so it is given that sgst paid by this customer is 15 on rupees 500 so we need to find the rate of gst right so as i said gst is basically divided into two parts half is for cgst and other half is for sgst right so if you will find here what percent of 500 is 15 so it is basically 3% right and sgst is basically half of gst so gst will be two times of sgst so this is going to be your correct answer all right so you need to be careful about the terms cgst sgst and igst all right next is complementary events so complementary events what are complementary events we know that if we have let's say a a is an event then a dash becomes complementary of that event all right so probability of happening of an event let's say probability of a is x then what is probability of not happening of an event so probability of not happening of an event a will be probability of a dash or a complement which is it is going to be 1 minus x so what is 1 1 is the total probability right and x is the probability of a so for complementary events this is how the probabilities are going to look like if it is x for certain event probability of complement of that event will be 1 minus x all right so whenever a question has been asked on finding not happening of an event you first need to find happening of that particular event for example there are let's say 10 balls and there are 5 red 5 green and one ball is picked now probability of not picking a green ball probability of not picking a green ball will be 1 minus probability of picking a green ball right so first you need to find this and then you can go for the not picking green ball right so for finding probability of not happening of an event you first need to find probability of happening of an event and then you can subtract it from 1 or the total probability to get the required one all right next is work done whenever the questions based on work done is has been asked what do we need to do is we first need to find the work done in one day work done in one day by an individual so if an individual is working alone how much work will be done in one day and then find the work done in one day if they work together if two individuals or more than two individuals work together what is going to be the work done for one day all right and then you can combine the results like if there are two people right so you will find work done by individual 1 and then work done by individual 2 in one day all right so let's say for i1 you will find work done by i1 in one day and then 
work done by I2 in one day. And then you will find work done by both of them working together in one day. And then you will add these two will be equal to if both of them work together. Right. So this is I1 plus I2 will be what work done in one day if they work together. All right. Then you need to just solve this equation and you will get the required result. All right. So for example, if we'll uh, look at this example, so it is given that Amit takes 12 days less than the days taken by Bijoy to complete a certain work. And also it is given that if both working together, they take eight days to complete the work. Now both working together, so they take eight days. So one day's work will be, so one day work will be one by eight, right? If they work together. Now consider a Bijoy takes X days. So Bijoy's one day work will be it will be 1 by X and since Amit is taking 12 days less so he will be taking X minus 12 days. Right? So his one day work will be 1 by X minus 12. Now if you will add these two so this is what Vijoy's one day work and this is Amit's one day work. And what is that? That is 1 by 8, right? So if you will add these two, you will get 1 by x plus 1 by x minus 12 is equal to 1 by 8. Then simply solve this and you will get the required result. All right. So for work done problems, you first need to find the work done in one day if a individual is working alone and then if they are working together all right now for mean so for finding mean of certain given data for ungrouped you just need to apply the formula that is sum of all the observations divided by the number of observations you'll get the mean now for grouped data what you will do if it is given that you need to use certain method use specific method then only you should use that method otherwise you need to use or you should use direct method because direct method is the shortest way of calculating mean all right so you need to keep this point in mind don't go for other methods if it is not given in the question go for the direct method so this was about the strategies that you can use for solving mcqs and subjective questions and also for few concepts. Now let's talk about certain tips and tricks that you can use while solving your paper. So read the paper thoroughly means you need to read the instructions that are given in the question. All right, you will be given 15 minutes to read the instructions to fill your uh, data. All right, so read it thoroughly. Highlight or mark the questions. So if you're going through the question paper, you should mark the questions that you are aware of okay or that you can solve all right so highlight the questions in the beginning only no solution in mcq so you won't write any solution for mcq you just need to write the correct option for mcqs all right you need to do the rough work either back side of the paper or leave some space for rough work like that do not go for mind calculations all right then you need to manage your time. So you need to devote a specific time to each question. Like if the question, if you feel that this question is lengthy, you should manage your time accordingly. For MCQs, you should not waste much of your time. All right. You just need to do the rough calculations and just write the correct options. All right. So manage your time. If you feel that you're getting stuck in certain question, then leave that question then and there and go for the other one because that will consume more time all right and then attempt that one at the end next is don't juggle so that means you should go in a sequence if you are attempting question number one then go for two three four all right in in this manner you should go sequentially attempt difficult one at the end as i said earlier if you're getting stuck at some question so you should leave that question and solve it at the end all right analyze the solution once you're done with the solution just go through it see whether you have written everything that is required or that is asked in the question all right and then take a glance at the end 
so you just need to take a glance that everything is perfect correct and i have attempted all the question that i was supposed to so you need to take a glance at the end so this was all about the tips and tricks that you can use while solving your paper now if you need any study materials or anything to practice you can definitely visit our website which is toplearning.com so i'll show you the glimpse of that first then you can select icsc class 10 so there you will find these materials study materials and the test that you can go for all right so if you will go for icsc class 10 these are the subjects that we offer now these are the materials that we provide for the practice and for learning so you can go for sample papers this is exactly look like the board paper all right so you can go for the sample papers practice the questions you can go for icsc 10 video solutions so if you want to clear certain concepts then you can definitely go for video solutions you can go for the previous year papers as well and you can go for textbook solutions if you want so we have different authors textbooks so we have uh, selena textbook frank textbooks all right for mathematics then you can go for revision notes so last minute uh, preparation if you want you can uh, surely go for revision notes this will be really helpful for you all right then you can find the test here so we offer a most important questions and they are updated as per the latest syllabus you can go for that you can go for multiple choice questions so we all uh, we know that paper is going to have multiple choice questions so if you need to practice on multiple choice questions you can surely go for this you can also go for subjective questions and if you want any practice test you can go for that as well also we have certain like i already explained to you about the test so we have uh, the mock papers as well you can go for that as well all right and if you're getting stuck at certain point and if you have any doubt in any concept you can use our study materials or you can directly ask a doubt on our platform so you can visit our uh, ask a doubt platform and also we have the app uh, available with us ask a doubt app so you can uh, download it and then you need not to go through the website you can directly put your doubts in the app and our experts will try to answer your query within 24 hours so you can get your queries resolved within 24 hours all right so this was all about the webinar so if you have any doubt related to the package related to the resources that we have you can surely call on this number this is our customer care number your queries will be resolved here also you can mail us at this email id that is contact us dot learning at nw18.com or if you feel any subjective doubts like if you feel any doubt in the concepts or particular topic you can surely visit our website or you can go through the ask a doubt app and put your queries there will be surely answering your queries within 24 hours so this was all about the webinar hope you do well in your exams all the very best for your exams thank you